uh, failure criterion is used together or is determined, these failure surfaces are determined with triaxial tests. In these triaxial tests, uh, usually axisymmetric triaxial tests, you apply a deviatoric stress by increasing the axial stress while you keep the radial stress uh, to be constant, right? Th this is a, a triaxial test. So you just increase that one and you keep the other two constant. Uh, so in such a triaxial test, the mean stress is going to be sigma 1 plus sigma 2 sigma 3, always I'm talking about effective stresses, divided by 3, and Q is going to be equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3, the, the deviatoric stress. So, if I apply a change of the axial stress, that's going to lead to what is going to be the change of the mean stress. So uh, what, what I'm asking is, if I apply this, what is going to be the change in delta P prime? Or basically, what is the derivative of P respect to sigma 1? It's going to be one third, right? So derivative then it's going to be one-third. So the change of delta P prime respect to sigma 1 is going to be that. Uh, and what about, what is going to be the change in delta Q? Zero? No, it's not going to be zero. So what is the derivative of, of Q respect to sigma 1? It's just going to be 1. Or just delta sigma 1. And, and when I run a triaxial test, what I'm trying to figure out here is what is called stress path. When I run a triaxial test, the ratio of delta Q divided delta P prime is going to be one third, right? So th this is what I get from these equations. So the meaning of that is that when now I go to this PQ space, and I want to run an experiment, uh, the slope of such experiment, let's say I start somewhere over here, okay? I, I get my sample, I compress it in all directions, and then you start increasing the axial stress. So if I increase the axial stress, this slope is going to be three the change of delta Q divided the change of delta P is going to be 3. Okay, so let's see if we have time for this because we are actually approaching a point in which uh, we, we, may, we may need to do a lot of stuff. Uh, so Uh, no, I would say let, let, let's pause for now because I, I don't want to get into something that I have to, to repeat again. Uh, for sure I have to repeat next time. Uh, but, uh, okay, one more thing. I, I was forgetting that. So we know what is this line because it goes through the, the zero uh, intercept uh, here to the original coordinates. The slope is M. This ellipse, its uh, top point, it coincides with that line and therefore and that point, we call it P naught. And because this is the axis, this is going to be P naught <coughs> divided by two. So now we have all the geometrical properties of that uh, failure criteria. Okay, so yes. Uh, you uh, there, you know, delta Q over delta P prime equals one third, shouldn't that be three? Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's equal to three. All right. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you on Thursday.